All right. So for our notes this time around, we're going to be talking about locus definition of a parabola. So what locus definition of a parabola is, it's another way of being able to write your equation of your parabola. And so this is used actually quite frequently in uh, many real world contexts. Um, there's a lot of places where they actually use locus definition to write the equation for your parabola as opposed to using your vertex form or your standard form that we have talked about. Um, so we'll talk about when it's used best and all that stuff. So locus definition here is our definition for it. Locus definition of a parabola is a parabola that is the collection of all points equidistant from a fixed point, which is known as the focus, and a fixed line, which is known as the directrix. So you have a point, you have a line, your parabola is created by finding all of the points that are the same distance between that point and that line. So again, we call those focus and directrix. So if we look at our picture down here, this right here is our directrix. It happens to also be your x-axis in that picture, but that is our directrix right here. This point is our focus. And so it then creates this parabola. And this parabola shows all of the points that are going to be the same distance from that focus and the directrix. So that's what we have here. So like this point right here, if you calculated the distance between that and the focus, it's the same as the distance between that and the directrix. So that is true for all of the points on that line. So this point here, your vertex, point here, 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 any point on that orange line right there, it's the same distance between the focus and the directrix. So we have a couple of different ways that we write the equation for your locus definition. Um, so as you can see, we have this one here, x minus h squared equals 4p times y minus k, or we can write it as y equals 1 over 4p times x minus h squared plus k. Um, so if you notice, this should hopefully look a little bit familiar. This kind of looks like your vertex form. A lot of the same properties are still true as it would be for our vertex form. HK is still gonna be the coordinates of your vertex, just like it is in vertex form. The only real difference is this value right here, the one over four P. Now, the reason why these two equations are the same if I try to manipulate this, I would divide by 4p. So that would give me my 1 over 4p times x minus h squared equals y minus k. And then I add my k over. And again, it's the same equation. So there's just two different ways of being able to write that same equation. If I manipulate this first one by dividing by the 4p, and then adding my k over, I have that same equation. So all these other variables, we know what they are. x is x, y is y, h and k are the coordinates of your vertex. The new one is this letter p. So no matter which form you look at, you've got that letter p there. p is the distance between either your vertex and your focus or between your directrix and your focus. So this distance is always going to be the same number, whether you look at your vertex and your focus or your vertex and directrix, it's going to be the same because the parabola is equidistant from them. It's the same distance from both of them. So that p value is just this distance here, either between, again, your vertex and your focus or your vertex and your directrix. So that is what our locus definition is. Again, it's another way of being able to write the equation of your parabola, taking into account that focus and that directrix. So sometimes when the focus and the directrix are used in your locus definition, 
would be for the light bulb of a flashlight. So the actual bulb part, that is your focus, that is your point. And then the line underneath um, the flashlight, that would be your directrix. And so that whole cone around the bulb, that is your parabola. That's how they created the parabola, was using this locus definition. Um, so to go to along with that is your headlights on your car. They used the um, locus definition to be able to create that parabola. Again, that is around the light bulb. That's going to create the best uh, light beam coming off of your car so that you can see most of the road. So they really kind of had to play around with it in order to get that best, um, that best beam so that you can see things. And satellites. Satellites, the satellite dish itself is a parabola. They always have, so here's like your satellite dish. They always have that little bulb that has lines connecting to it. There's your focus. The directrix is somewhere back here, but the satellite dish is created using that locus definition. So there's just some examples, light bulbs, headlights, satellites. That's an example of when our locus definition was used, was to create those items there. So let's take a look at some examples. So we have a parabola, which is y equals 1 over 4x squared plus 1, is shown graphed below with the selected points shown. For this parabola, its focus is the point 0, 2, and the directrix is the x-axis. All right, so focus is the point zero two. So I'm going to look at my graph down here. There's my focus. And the directrix is the x-axis. So there's my directrix down there. The directrix is not always the x-axis. It just happens to be the x-axis in this example and the one that we had on the front page. So they're telling us that this parabola the equation for it is y equals 1 over 4x squared plus 1. All right, so that's telling us we have a dilation of 1 fourth, a vertical shift of 1. Those rules all still apply. We just use that locus formula to create the equation. All right, so let's look at our other questions here. How far is the turning point, which is the point zero, 01, from both the focus and the directrix? All right, so if I look, here's my turning point. It is one unit below the focus, and it is one unit above the directrix. So it is one unit from both the focus and the directrix. All right. How far is the point 2, 2 from both the focus and the directrix? All right, here's my point 2, 2. I had that drawn already on the parabola for you. So if I just count over, it is two units from the focus, and it is two units from the directrix. So it is two units from both. And again, this is just to kind of reinforce the idea that every point on this parabola is the same distance from both this focus and this directrix. So again, if we're looking at a light bulb, the focus is the actual bulb, the directrix is an imaginary line behind it. All right, next one. So verify that the point four five this point right here, 0.45, is the same distance from both. Okay, so if I count straight down to the directrix, it is five units from the directrix. And again, directrix is that line, which is the x-axis. In this example, it is not always your x-axis, but in this one it is. So it is five units from that. Now, trying to figure out from the focus, though, that is a diagonal. So we can use either the distance formula to actually calculate it. 
I like to use Pythagorean theorem personally. If I finish this off and make this a right triangle here, I have one, two, three. I have a base of four and a height of three, which this is a three, four, five then. Right triangle. It's a three, four, five triple. Because again, I created that right triangle to be able to calculate my distance. I'll color it in so you can see it a little bit better, which I'm allowed to do. So again, I could either do distance formula between the two points or I created the right triangle and I could see it was a Pythagorean triple. The distance down here is four, the height is three, which means that this is gonna be a five because then it's a three, four, five right triangle. So I have verified it is five from the directrix. That was an easy countdown. And it is also five from the focus because I created that three, four, five with that green triple there. So every point here is going to be equidistant from that focus. If I did it with my point six, 10, again, it's gonna be 10 from the directrix. It's gonna be a diagonal. So I would create my right triangle and I would find out that it's also going to be a 10 that way. So every point on this parabola is the same distance from the focus and the directrix. And that's the way it always goes with our locus definition. All right, let's do some practice problems. So consider, excuse me, consider a parabola whose focus is the point zero seven and whose directrix is the line y equals three. So this one's not the x axis. All right. I am going to sketch a picture. So one, two, three. So I'm going to say here's, that's the line y equals three. That's my directrix. Zero, seven is my focus. My turning point is going to be right in the middle of those. Okay, so if this is at three, this is at seven. My turning point is going to be right there in the middle of them. So my turning point is going to be at 0, 5. Your turning point always has the same x value as your focus because it's always going to be directly either above or below that focus. And so this one is going to be right there at 0, 5. Now we're going to have to determine the equation of the parabola using the locus definition. Okay. So I'm going to use the y equals 1 over 4p times x minus h squared plus k. It doesn't matter which form of the equation that we use. Um, I've always just developed a preference for this one because it looks so much like the vertex form. It just is, I find it to be a little bit easier to use because it's so similar. So in order to write our equation, we need to know the values of P, H, and K. Because X is or Y is going to stay as Y, X is going to stay as X, because we always need an X and a Y in an equation. So we need to fill in the other variables. So we need to fill in P, H, and K. So H and K, again, come from your turning point. So my H is a 0, my K is a 5, just like it would be for your vertex form. P is the distance between the turning point and the focus or direct axis. We look at our graph up here, we have a distance of two. So my P value is a two. So I get one over four times two times X minus zero squared plus five, excuse me. So cleaning that up a little bit, I get one eighth X squared plus five. That is my equation written using my locus definition. Really not too bad. All right, let's try another one. So determine the equation of a parabola whose focus is the point four one and whose directrix is the horizontal line y equals negative three. So even though they didn't tell me I like to make a picture. I find the picture is helpful when I'm trying to write my locus definition formula here. So y equals negative three. I'm gonna say that's down there. 
y equals negative 3. My focus is the point 4, 1. There's my picture. I got my little sketch. Directrix is the line y equals negative 3. Focus is the point 4, 1. So my turning point, also known as my vertex, is going to be in the middle of those. So in the middle would be right here. So again, my turning point is always going to line up right with my focus. So my turning point is going to be the point 4, negative 1, because that negative 1 is going to be right there in the middle. If you're not sure, you can always take the average of the two y values. So 1 plus a negative 3 divided by 2 would give you a negative 1. So that's how I know the y value for my turning point. Our p-value, the distance here would be 2. The distance here would also be 2. So my p-value here is a 2. So plugging into my formula, it's going to be 4 times 2, x minus 4 squared, minus 1, plugging in the coordinates of my vertex there. So 1, 8, x minus 4 squared, minus 1. So again, the picture is very helpful. It helps you find your p-value pretty easily, although you can find that also by sketching a picture. The pic, or, uh, doing the average, I mean. So 1 plus negative 3 divided by 2 gave us negative 1, so I knew that's where my y-coordinate was going to be. Next one, determine the equation of a parabola whose focus is the point negative 4, 1, and whose directrix is the horizontal line y equals 5. All right, so this one's a little different this time because my directrix is on the top. Here's my directrix, which is y equals 5. Negative 4, 1 is my focus. So my directrix line this time is above my focus. So what that's going to do is that's going to change my p-value and make it negative. All right, so when the focus is on the bottom, my p-value is going to be negative. So let's first figure out where is our turning point going to be located. So here's that 1. 5, right in the middle, turning point is going to be at the point negative 4, 3, because halfway between 1 and 5, again, 1 plus 5 divided by 2 <clears throat> gives us a y value of 3. P, our distance between, again, it's going to be negative 2 this time, because when I draw this parabola, since the focus is down below, my parabola is going to end up pointing down. So I'm, I'm going to need that negative value there. So I'm plugging into my formula. 1 over 4 times p, so 4 times negative 2. x minus negative 4 squared plus 3. Cleaning this up, I get negative 1 eighth times x plus 4 squared plus 3. There's my equation this time. All right. And our last one here, this one's kind of asking us to go in the other direction, though. So we want to find the vertex. I'm going to make myself a little list. We've got to find the vertex. Oops. That's supposed to say AOS. That was a little typo. So axis of symmetry. The equation for the directrix and the focus. So we have an equation this time. This one is written in the other format. So again, this would be x minus h squared equals 4p times y minus k. That's the formula that they use this time. So trying to piece things together. 3, negative 3 are going to be the coordinates of my vertex, okay? Because following the equation, it's x minus h, so that's going to be 3 and minus k, but so since that was positive, that means it's going to be a negative number, which is what turned it positive, because I subtracted a negative 3, which made it plus 3. 
axis of symmetry is always the x portion of your vertex. Okay. So now we need to figure out the directrix and the focus. So that involves the 4p. So that value negative 8 came from 4p. So if I say 4p equals negative 8 divided by 4, my p is a negative 2. So that negative is telling me that the focus is below my turning point and my directrix is above it. Okay. So two units below my vertex would be my focus. So at 3, negative 5, two units above it means my directrix will be at y equals negative 1. So again, p being negative told us it was upside down. So the focus had to be below it. The directrix had to be above it.